All right, everyone, it's the last tech talk of the day. Maybe uh, I'm going to steal a little bit from John and, like, can we get like a little TEDx round of applause for yourselves? All right, thank you, everyone. My name is Dylan, uh, and today I'm going to be talking to you about regular expressions and HTML parsing. Uh, as you can see, I've got the title of my presentation here, and if you're not familiar with regex, you might be wondering what does this really mean, and so I provided uh, a nice little English translation for you, which is how to impress developer friends and sound smart at dinner parties. It's all the important things. Uh, before I get into the meat of the presentation, I'd like to tell you all a little story about a cuddly little developer who one day went on to Stack Overflow and said, let's parse HTML using regex. And the lovely developers there on Stack Overflow decided to respond with the following. Uh, you can't parse XHTML with regex because HTML can't be parsed with regex. Regex is not a tool that can be used correctly to parse HTML. Further along, every time you attempt to parse HTML with regular expressions, the unholy child weeps the blood of virgins and Russian hackers pawn your web app. Parsing HTML with regex summons tainted souls into the realm of the living. HTML and regex go together like love, marriage, and ritual infanticide. If you are like me, you're wondering, what is going on? What is the huge controversy here? It seems like regular expressions might be good for matching text on an HTML page. Uh, but as we're going to learn, uh, there are some serious problems uh, and very strong reasons as to why this is considered uh, a big anti-pattern. So the outline for today is, today is first, what is a regular expression? This is going to be our theoretical foundation, OK? Uh, we're going to look at where they come from, uh, and we can inform our understanding a bit through an understanding of theoretical computer science and language theory. Then we're going to do some JavaScript. Uh, we're going to look at how regex is implemented in JavaScript and some features of that implementation uh, that help us understand uh, the power of, of regex and also some of the pitfalls. Finally, we'll look really specifically at that problem I presented just now, which is why is it bad in some cases to use regex to parse or match HTML? So first of all, what is a regular expression? Uh, the first time I saw it, it just looked like a bunch of gobbledygook uh, screen, uh, stuff on the screen that I didn't really understand. Uh, and that is a bit frightening, but in the end, what they are are powerful string matchers with a little bit of scary syntax. And if you can get over the fact that the syntax looks a little bit scary, you realize that this is a great tool to have uh, in, your, in your toolkit. Now, since we're talking about theory in the first part, I want to make a distinction between a regular expression and regex. Okay? Colloquially, we use these terms interchangeably. But for the purpose of my talk, a regular expression is part of theory. And regex is the implementation of that theory. Okay? A regular expression you can understand as, as we'll talk about very soon, a finite state machine. Whereas a regex is language specific. It's, a, it's implemented usually through a specific data type. Uh, where this fits conceptually uh, into the order of things is a regular expression is part of the Chomsky hierarchy, whereas a regex kind of fits into your toolkit as a programmer. You're probably wondering, what is this Chomsky hierarchy thing? Well, uh, we've got circles, or ovals, I guess. Um, and so uh, Noam Chomsky, as you know, is a famous linguist and uh, used a mathematical classification system that helps us understand both spoken languages, but also computer languages or uh, their, their implementations. And so we have different types here, uh, and they're defined based on the production rules uh, which govern those grammars or the automata. And so the most basic are actually here in the middle uh, in the type 3. And so these are known as regular grammars or regular uh, expressions, really. This is, this is where the term comes from. And they only have really two significant production rules, which is if you go from a non-terminal A, you can either go to some other terminal state or from uh, this non-terminal A to a terminal and then another non-terminal. Um, one thing to note is that the, the, the production rules for each outer type encompass, or they are also inclusive of all the production rules of the inner circle. So something that is uh, a context-free grammar will also be able to use all the production rules for something that is a regular grammar. So this is our theoretical framework, right? Regular expressions are here inside. The, they're the most basic type 
uh, within the Chomsky hierarchy. Other languages, for instance, HTML actually exists here. They are a context-free language. So remember that for later on in our presentation. All right, so what does this mean when we say a regular expression is a finite state machine? Let's walk through an example. So we've got this regular expression GO plus, which uh, is convention for matching one or more of the previous character AL. And so we start off at a particular state, which is our initial state S0. And if we get a G, we move on to the next state. And if we get an O, we move on to the next state after that. And since we've indicated plus, we can continue to loop through states one and two uh, until we reach an A, and that will move us forward until finally, if we reach all of the, if we match all of the characters, we'll, we'll reach this final state S4, and that means that we found a match. So uh, if our test string is goal, this returns through because we move uh, through each character from state zero all the way to state four. We could also have the test string goal, which also returns true, or the test string goal, which all return true. Gal does not return true because we never make it from uh, our state one uh, across into state two. And the same thing goes for goat. Now, notice that in the previous slides, we haven't had anything that's actually JavaScript. So now we're going to talk a bit about how these regular expressions are implemented as regex in JavaScript. So uh, let's look at some uh, typical uh, thing that we might do with a, with a, with a regex. Uh, which is, okay, let's say I've got this, uh, this string and, of famous female mathematicians and scientists, and uh, the, we want to take this string and parse through and separate each first and last name. So we can write this simple regular expression here that matches any word character uh, of zero or more, followed by a space, followed by some more word characters. So this backslash w will match anything alphanumeric, right? And then we run the global tag just to make sure that we're running across the entire input. And so we call this, uh, we call the string prototypal match method, and we get back this uh, array of, of matches, which is great. And you're probably thinking, wow, that seems really complicated for something we could just as easily accomplish with something like dot split. You're absolutely right. But remember that regex are not equal to regular expressions. When we implement regex in JavaScript, we soup it up with a whole bunch of other things that aren't just basic string matching. And we have things like capturing groups. So you can actually cap not only capture values, but actually refer back to them uh, and create new strings directly by calling uh, a method that's a string or a, or a regex method. So what does that mean? So we can actually capture these, these word groups here, uh, which we'll do by placing parentheses around them. And then we'll run the replace method. And this here, this dollar sign refers to the first capture group or the second capture group. So here we're going to give uh, our famous female mathematicians and scientists email uh, addresses. And so if we run this replace method, we actually return the string that captures these values and then replaces them, but uses the values that we captured, which is pretty, a pretty powerful tool. So like I said, regex are souped up regular expressions, right? They're not just basic finite state machines. They have all kinds of cool stuff. And so uh, let's say we've got this variable, our favorite animal. And we can actually construct a regular expression not just by declaring it literally like we did in the previous slide, but by using the regex constructor. Uh, and now this isn't really change the functionality at all, but it does allow us to pass variable values in, uh, for instance, like if you had user input, you could construct a regex this way. Uh, and it's just equivalent to, to something similar that we had before. But some interesting things happen when we run a test on something like goat llama, which is, uh, this will return true, but then if we call it again, it returns false. Uh, that's weird, let's try calling it again, and so it's true, but then we run it again and it returns false, and this doesn't really seem to make sense, right? This is the same regular expression, right? Why does it give us different results when we call it from, from one uh, line to the next? Well, uh, we're here and we're confused, and thankfully Dennis Ritchie tells us to recall that in JavaScript, regex are objects with their own methods and properties. And like I said, this is kind of like uh, a bit of state that they have. And so regex, again, are their souped up regular expressions, right? They have extra stuff on them. And it turns out that if you're running the G, the global tag in a JavaScript regex, you're actually searching not from the beginning of the string, but from a property on the regex called dot last index. So if we go and inspect that, we can see that after our first call, we have the last index is zero because that's where it matched goat. 
But if we run it again, it actually starts searching from index 4. And this could be a completely different string. Uh, it's, well, I'm just using the same one just for kind of uh, instructional purposes. So this is why we get this weird alternation. So again, keep in mind that uh, these regex are objects and they have properties and methods on them. Uh, and that makes them more powerful, but it, it, again, it can be clunky at times if you're trying to do things um, in a, that are very, uh, that are more complex. Finally, let's get to this question of HTML and why regex can or can't be a good tool to parse it. So let's say I've got this string, right? And I want to capture anything that's within an emphasis tag. So I could write a simple regex that basically says, okay, find an EM, EM and dot will match pretty much anything, and star says uh, any amount of it, uh, and then I'll, I'll search for the closing EM tag as well. And so if I run match on this string, that gets what we want. But what if we had a second EM tag there? Well, if I did this, it would give us the whole string back. Why is that? Well, that's because uh, by default, the regex is greedy. It's going to find as much and match as much of it of this text string as we can. So, okay, there's probably a workaround for that, right? We can add this question mark here that's a lazy quantifier, basically saying the first time that you find a closing tag, just get us that much. And so that'll work, but okay, now we're back to not having the second, um, the second EM tag there. And so, okay, what do we do? Let's throw in the global like we were doing before. And so, okay, that works. Now we're actually capturing both of the EM tags. Okay, we've got some problems because HTML is complicated and actually we've got capitals and lowercase. And so now we want to throw in the I tag, which is going to be case unsensitive. This is valid HTML, I should add. And so finally we're getting the, the right results if we add these other tags. But oh wait, now we've got problems like commented out things and oh yeah, a tag that never closes and what if they're nested and oh my gosh, like there's just so many problems because HTML uh, might be poorly written or formatted in a way that we don't understand. And so we're running th into a lot of struggles right here. And let me remind you, we haven't done any parsing at all. We're just trying to match characters. We're, we haven't even tried to separate an HTML document into its relevant parts. So if you think about it, there could probably be a better tool for separating HTML into its different parts, right? Your browser or uh, an HTML parser, right? You've got all kinds of other tools that are better for this job. Uh, so if you've got a very specific thing you want to do on an HTML page with, uh, with regex, that's great. But otherwise, you probably are using the tool for the wrong thing. So again, key takeaways. Regular expressions are finite state machines. In JavaScript, though, the implementation of those are regex, with their souped up and their objects. And finally, if you're using regex to match HTML, use caution. Uh, here are some uh, reading materials. I highly recommend this regexer website. Uh, it's the best tool for understanding uh, and teaching yourself how to use regular expressions or regex if you're not familiar. So go forth, learn more, and thank you very much.